Hey there nation and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, we are back in another episode of Cheap Shots, and this series shows you how to save money on the Miniatures Wargaming hobby, and on today's episode we're going to show you guys how to quickly and more importantly cheaply paint up a unit of Putrid Blight Kings for your games of Warhammer Age of Sigmar, or Warhammer Fantasy, or Warhammer the Old World. So by following the techniques, tricks, tips, and materials that we suggest in our Cheapskate method, this entire unit is going to have this beautiful tabletop stance you see here for a grand total cost of $43 as well as 15 cents. Now, when you compare this with the items that you need to buy from Army Painter as well as Citadel, and assuming you're purchasing these things for a very first time, you're talking about a grand total savings of $163.15. So that being said, let's go and show you guys how to quickly and cheaply paint up some Peter Blight Kings for your games of Warhammer. So once you have your miniatures assembled, the very first thing you do, of course, is to texture the bases. So in this situation, I decided to go with this texturing that I like to use, which is a combination of wood glue as well as sand. The first thing I do is I take the cheapest wood glue that I have and I paint it over the entirety of the base. And then what I do is I dust it with sand that I get from my backyard. And once that, of course, dries, I then create a 50-50 mixture of wood glue and water, and then I apply it like a wash all over the texturing on this base and let it dry. The reason why I do that is so that way it creates a sealant so that way the sand doesn't flake off your guys' bases. It's a very uh, easy and very cost effective way to add texture to your guys' bases without breaking the bank. And once those bases are textured, the next thing you do, of course, is a primer. So the type of primer I like to use is Rust-Oleum Flat White Primer. I can buy this stuff for a can of uh, $3.99 at my local Walmart. And as you can see in this photo, all I do is just give a quick once over with the white primer all over the entirety of the miniatures. Now when it comes to priming, priming does a couple of things. The first thing that primer does actually is create an uneven surface on a microscopic level for your acrylic paints to adhere to. The reason why is because acrylic paints are just basically liquid plastic, and if you paint it on bare plastic without any sort of primer on there, the surface tension of the acrylic paints has nothing to grip onto on the plastic surface, so because that, it would easily slide off your miniature and also ruin your finish. So by adding a primer, what it does, it actually creates a, a more adhesive surface for your acrylics to adhere to, and actually ends up with a long-lasting result. Now when it comes to primer, determining on what color of primer you're using, it could have an effect overall on the vibrancy of the colors that you're using on your miniatures. Traditionally speaking, if you're going for a brighter color scheme you want to go with a white a darker color scheme you usually go with a black primer and of course just a gray primer for a medium now the reason why i'm using a white primer in this one is because i am doing a quick paint method which involves oil washing and oil washing tends to dull and darken the vibrancy of your colors so i want to go with a very bright and colorful vibrancy on the colors that i use so that way when i add the oil wash it's not too muted and that's the reason why i use a white primer now once you're done with the primer, of course, the next thing you do is work on the flesh. There's a lot of exposed flesh on these uh, characters, and so I decided to go with a 50-50 color color scheme. I decided to paint up half the unit with flesh tones, and another half of the unit with like this kind of decaying, necrotic flesh look. So for our two colors on this one, I use Apple Barrel Flesh, as well as Apple Barrel Palm Leaf. You can buy these two products at your local Walmart for about 50 cents uh, for a two ounce tube, and all I do is I just put two thin coats directly onto the parts of the flesh that are exposed from the miniature. And as you can see, half the unit, of course, is done in flesh, while the other half is done in that necrotic uh, pay, uh, palm leaf green. And of course, once you put your two coats on, once you got to do it, get that accomplished, the next thing you do, of course, is a dry brush. So the colors I use for the dry brush, for those who are done with a flesh color for their uh, flesh, I use Delta Coat Peaches and Cream. And for the ones that have the necrotic flesh look, I dry brush those guys in Lime Sherbet by Apple Barrel Paint. Now, you can buy the Peaches and Cream from Delta Coat from your local Hobby Lobby. It costs you about 65 cents, while the Lime Sherbet I got from Walmart for about 50 cents. Now, dry brushing does a couple of things. The first thing that dry brushing does, it creates the illusion of highlights on your miniature because as you dry brush your miniature, the pigment of the lighter paint actually catches upon the raised surface of your miniatures while leaving that darker color in the recesses. And by doing that, it creates the illusion of depth on your miniatures as well by creating those artificial highlights. Now, unfortunately, when you do dry brushing, you do going to have this kind of like chalky kind of finish on your miniatures. And that's because that's the individual pigments actually adhering to the highlights of your miniature. Do not stress out if you actually see that chalky pastel look because once we go through our oil wash, it's going to smooth out those transitions and get away with that chalky appearance. So just trust the process. It's going to be perfectly fine by the time you get done. 
So once you guys are done with the flesh tones, you actually got a lot of the miniatures painted. The next thing you do now is start working on the armor panels. Now the nice thing about these miniatures, they have nice chunky thick armor all over their uh, miniatures and the armor besides the flesh tone does cover quite a bit. So we actually get a lot of the materials done for these guys. So for half the squad, I decided to paint them up in different shades of green because green is a color that's usually associated with Nurgle. I use four main colors, all four from Apple Barrel Paint. You could use Holly Branch, English Ivy Green, Palm Leaf, as well as Marsh Green. All four of these colors cost 50 cents at your local Walmart and I just put two thin coats on all the armor panels and painted them whatever colors I wanted to. So that way I have a nice variety of colors throughout the miniatures so that way they don't look too monotonous or monochromatic. And as you can see here, the, the one with the sky that I painted with holly green, the one with the spear at Halberd I did English ivy green. For the uh, witch character I used palm leaf and then for the guy with the axes I used marsh green for those to kind of create this kind of very interesting color palette for the unit. For the other half of the unit, the unit that we painted with that necrotic flesh, I painted all their armor panels the same just because I thought it would look really interesting to have that uh, duality of colors going on. In this case, I used pavement by Apple Barrel Paint. I use this for all the black elements as well as for the witch with the hair as well, so that way you can get that kind of cool look. And I put two thin coats of this stuff on all the armor panels as well. Now, the nice thing about pavement is that pavement is a very, very, very dark gray, almost black, but it's not exactly completely black. And the nice thing about the Apple Barrel Pavement Paint is there's also a little bit of a grittiness to the texturing of the paint itself which is perfect for dry brushing because when you do dry brushing on top of pavement paint it looks absolutely fantastic when it's done so once you get the armor panels all painted up the next thing we need to do now of course is a dry brush all right, so when it comes to the dry brusher course, we are dry brushing the armor. For all the green armor panels, I dry brush that once again in lime sherbet by Apple Barrel Paint, uh, so that way we create that illusion of depth. As for the black armor, I actually dry brush in winter green by Apple Barrel Paint. You can find this at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. It's a beautiful, vibrant mint green, and I find that when you dry brush pavement with this it actually kind of creates this kind of weird kind of chitinous kind of insectoid looking uh, type of uh, texture going on with the armor it actually looks really really cool especially when you combine it with the oil washing i actually use this for a lot of the different nurgle units that the studio that we actually paint up to create this kind of organic kind of insectoid look for the armor and i think it looks really really good especially when you put it with the uh, black armor for these guys as well so once you guys are done dry brushing these guys for the most part most of these preacher bike kings are actually painted up uh, for the most part. Uh, all we gotta do now is start concentrating on the finer details. So the first detail we're going to work on are all the open wounds as well as open sores on these guys. And of course, these units, of course, have lots of uh, rent open wounds, organs hanging out, pustules and pockmarks over their bodies. So because of that, to create that illusion of, uh, of gory detail on these guys, we're going to use two coats of Bright Magenta by Apple Barrel Paint. You get this stuff at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. And we just put two thin coats on all the open wounds and sores and organs and rends and flesh and stuff that are decorating these units as well. I also put the uh, Bright Magenta on all the tentacles that these guys also have as well because Nurgle units have a lot of tentacles with them. And once you get those two thin uh, coats of magenta on there, it looks really, really awesome. It looks very vibrant. It contrasts nicely with the different tones of green that we have in these guys. So once we get that base coat down, next thing we gotta do now is another dry brush. So once again, with the dry brushing on this one, we use cam, uh, Cameo Pink by Apple Barrel Paint. This stuff costs you 50 cents to a local Walmart, and we just do a quick dry brushing on all the tentacles as well as exposed flesh that's on here. Now, I do know that a couple of my viewers are concerned. If you're concerned about overspilling with the magenta or the pink onto the necrotic flesh or on the flesh of any of these characters, do not freak out, and I recommend not kneading it up either, okay? Just leave it alone if that's the case. And the reason why is because we are going to put a homemade blood effect on all of these uh, open wounds and sores and stuff all over these bodies and so that's a nice thing about nurgle miniatures nurgle miniatures are a very forgiving army to paint especially if you're a brand new painter and the reason why is because if you make up any errors you could actually make some homemade gore as well as slime effects and you could use that to actually you know cover up your mistakes that you do on your miniatures nurgle miniatures are extremely forgiving uh, if you're not a very good technical painter because if you add some blood effect as well as gore effect it hides a great many mistakes and that's why i highly suggest that you do as well so if you do a make those mistakes do not stress out because the blood and gore effect will hide those all right, so the next detail we're going to work on real quick are all the wooden as well as leather details that these guys have. So some of these guys are wearing cloth fabric. Some of these guys have halves of their weapons. They also have belts and boots and such. So because that, we use two colors in order to do that. We use the Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel Paint, which is a nice dark brown for all the halves of the weapons, the handles for all the weapons. We also use them with some of the fabric as well as some of the leather goods that these guys have as well. Same thing with the pavement paint as well. So we use the same thing for like all the leather goods that these guys have to create some variety of colors on the leather goods that these guys are uh, wearing as well as the weapons that they're carrying as well. 
Now, regardless of what color you painted the weapon handles as well as the leather goods, you're gonna dry brush them exactly the same with Delta Serum Coat Drizzle Gray. You can find this at your local uh, Hobby Lobby for about 65 cents. You just do a quick overall dry brushing on the leather goods as well as the handles of the weapons to kind of give you the weapons and the leather goods this kind of dusty, kind of worn look to it as well. And it's a nice way to create that effect for your miniatures. Now the next detail we're going to work on, of course, are all the bone details on these miniatures. So a lot of these characters have crests on their helmets and horns. They also have fangs and teeth and bones sticking out of places and stuff. They also have spines sticking out of their bodies. So for all those details that we're doing for all the bone materials, we're going to put two thin coats of khaki paint by Aberborough Paint. You can find this at your local Walmart for 50 cents. Just put two thin coats on all the bone elements on these miniatures to make a contrast nicely with all the greens, blacks, and pinks that we have on these guys. And then we're pretty much almost done with all of the uh, non-metallic details. Now for two members of this warband, they do have like this interesting like rope around their bodies for belts as well as some satchels for the witch character. So because that we're going to pick up that additional detail in Territorial Beige by Apple Pearl Paint, it costs 50 cents at your local Walmart. And we're just going to put two thin coats of that stuff on the sacks as well as on the handbags as well as the ropes that these characters have on them as well. And once we're done with that Territorial Beige detail, almost all of our colors are done. So now the next step we're going to work on is on the metallic elements. So for the metallic elements on these miniatures, we're using three different colors. We're using uh, Deco Arts uh, Emperor's Gold Metallic, which you can get at your local Walmart for about 50 cents, as well as Folk Art Copper, as well as Folk Art Gunmetal Gray. Both those colors can be found at your local Walmart for 75 cents. And as you can see in this picture, we're just picking out all the details that we want to be in metallics. So for example, all the blades of the weapons uh, we're using Gunmetal Gray on, just put two thin coats for that. For the copper elements, we're doing things like armor pieces, as well as the circular kind of formations that these guys have in the armor as well, signifying uh, the symbol of Nurgle. Uh, we're also picking out those details as well. We're also picking out some of the smaller, finer details in gold, uh, Emperor's Gold as well. So things like hilts, for example, the weapons, medallions these characters are wearing, ruins that are on their armor, decorative pieces that they have on them, whatever the case may be. So whatever kind of metallic elements you want to paint it up, just put two, two thin coats of all these metallic colors and you're pretty much set to go. Now the very last thing we do real quick is to focus on the pustules that these guys are carrying as well, as well as some finer details. So because of these are Nurgle miniatures, these Nurgle miniatures have lots of pustules and sores and weird things all over their bodies. So for those two colors, I like to use Kiwi by Apple Barrel Paint as well as Tropical Orange by Apple Barrel Paint as well. Both of those can be found at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. So I like to use the kiwi for all the pustules that are on the flesh and any pock marks that are on their armor i like to use tropic orange just put a single dot of that stuff on there to just add some different color variety to the armor that they're wearing as well and then finally any cording or grips or stuff like that that you find on the weapons uh, i like to use um delta serum coats tahitian blue which costs you 65 cents at your local walmart and all you gotta do is just put two little dots or whatever you want to use so for example the eyes of the little cat for example as well as the uh, tw uh, twine that's located on the witch's uh, staff these are some examples of some details I pick out in that Tahitian blue. And once you are done, next thing we're going to do now, of course, is an oil wash. So as I mentioned before, this is a quick paint method, which means that we do one single wash for the entire of the miniatures, and it's an oil wash. In this case, the oil wash that we'd like to use is uh, Minwax Poly Shade Acrylics uh, in the Mission Oak color. You can find this stuff at your local Walmart for about six bucks and ninety-nine cents. Traditionally, when you do a quick paint method, a lot of people like to use the Armor Painter Strong Tone or the Armor Painter Soft Tone in most cases, and those are perfectly fine to do so. Those are wonderful products that do exactly as they advertise. The only problem, though, is that the Army Painter products cost thirty-two dollars per can, while Minwax only costs seven dollars. And so because I like using the min wax instead. So all you gotta do of course is take the min wax and just put it all over the entirety of the miniature like a wash. And the washing actually does a couple of things. The first thing it does is that it smooths out the transitions between your dry brushes as well as your base coats. So if you look now that chalky kind of pastel look that we had earlier is now entirely gone because those layers of dry brushing and base coating have now have a smoother transition because the oil wash and it blends very nicely. The second thing that the oil wash does of course is also darkens down the vibrancy of the colors that we use and that's the reason why we use such bright colors in the first portion of this paint job so that way when that oil wash is added to it it would darken it down and won't be too muted and the third thing that it does which is probably the most important thing is that the oil wash does creep into the recesses of the miniature bring a lot of those details that we could not see with the base coats as well as the dry brushing and so it adds a lot of detail to these guys it makes them look really really awesome at the same time it looks kind of grimy you can see a lot of those details we couldn't see earlier now the mid wax poly shade does have polyurethane in it which means that it will dry 
and will have a clear protective coat on it. So I suggest that you use this step as the very last step of whatever day you're painting and let it dry and cure for 24 hours. If you handle these miniatures before the drying and curing process is over with, you could ruin the finish of your miniature and I'm speaking from experience on that point. So just leave for 24 hours, return back to the next day and you can ready to move on. So now that we're done with the miniatures, the next thing we need to do now is start working on the bases. Now this next step is optional. I do like to use a spray varnish on my miniatures because I don't like that sheen candy coated look that the mid wax poly shade does because of the polyurethane. So I like to use a matte varnish by Krylon. You can get that at your local Walmart for about five bucks. Just do it once over real quick to kind of mute down that sheen and bring out those details with a matte finish. Now, of course, if you do like that candy coated look, you could of course skip this step. Now for the bases, the first thing that we do is you actually paint the entire bases and one layer of pavement paint by Apple barrel paint. Now you might be wondering, well, Commander Cheapskate, won't some of the white undercoat poke through the bases if you only paint it with one level, with only with one uh, coat of pavement? The answer is yes, but I wouldn't worry about it too much because after we get done adding the pavement paint, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dry brush the entirety of the surface with uh, Folk Arts Burnt Sienna. You can get this stuff at your local Walmart for about 75 cents. So if there's any white undercoat showing through, it's not a big deal because the dry brushing will take care of that. And if the dry brushing doesn't take care of that, the next dry brushing certainly will. So once we get done with the dry brushing for the Folk Arts Persina, we once again use Folk Arts Terracotta, which is a nice clayish, uh, orangish color, and we use that to dry brush the bases once again. And as you can see there, it kind of creates this kind of wasteland, burnt ash type of look going on on the bases, which is absolutely perfect for any chaos model that you can imagine. So that part is kind of nice. But we're not done here yet because the next thing we're gonna do now, of course, is add some necrotic ooze on the bases to make it look appropriate and nurgly. So for the bases for my Nurgle units, I like to create like this kind of boggy swamp, kind of toxic kind of look to what's going on. And so because I would like to do is I like to add patches of Kiwi paint by Apple Barrel Paint. As you can see, it contrasts quite nicely to the dry brushing that we did earlier on the paint uh, the, on the bases as well. It kind of creates this kind of like pustule, oozy, kind of nasty effect going on on the bases. And of course, once we do our two think our single coat of the Kiwi on that, we can move on to our slime effects. Now you might be thinking, well, Commander Chiefscape, if you only put a single layer of Kiwi paint, won't the darker color underneath you know, poke through. If it does, that's perfectly fine because what it does, it even makes it that a Kiwi effect even look more vibrant because it makes it look like there's different shades of different oozy nastiness, just kind of like in the bog that they're walking through. So it just only kind of adds to that effect. So now that we added that Kiwi paint to it, the next thing we do now is add our homemade slime as well as our homemade blood effect. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do now, of course, is add our homemade slime effect and our homemade blood effect. To do that, what you're gonna purchase a Midwax Poly Acrylic Clear Gloss. It's gonna cost you $6.99. What you're gonna do is you're gonna make a 50-50 mix of that Midwax Poly Acrylic with any cheap red paint that you have. And also, if you want to create the slime effect, just combine with any cheap green paint that you also have as well. And it creates a nice, like, slimy effect as well as blood effect. So for the blood effect, I suggest you put in all the open wounds as well as the sores and that you would spread all over the miniature as well. And if you add that blood effect, just have it kind of spill over the edge to make it look like it's been crusty and bloody and makes it look really, really appropriate. So like I said before, if you made any mistakes with those sores, it's not a big deal because that blood effect's gonna hide a lot of the mistakes you possibly could have made. Same thing with the slime effect as well. With the slime effect, you take a 50-50 mixture of kiwi paint mixed with that polyacrylic, you put it all over the bases of the uh, slime ooze that you said either, as you did earlier, so that makes it look nice and nasty looking. At the same time, apply the same effect on things like the pustules, the blades if you want to, on parts of the armor pack, Panel or any places that you made a mistake and it's going to blend out nicely and it's going to look really really nasty and slimy and very much what a little Nurgle miniature should look like. And the nice thing about this homemade blood and slime effect is that when it dries it does have this kind of high gloss look to it to make it look even more gory and more slimy. And the very last step that we got to do on these miniatures, of course, is to rim the bases. In this case, I like to use uh, Folk Arts Bird Sienna. Just put two thin coats of that along the rim of the bases. And as you can see, we have a beautiful standard on these guys. The Bird Sienna contrasts nicely with all the greens and the slimes, as well as the wasteland effect on the bases. And it looks really, really awesome at the same time. All right, so this is what the end result that it's gonna look like for your units, uh, as we saw earlier at the end of the, at the beginning of the video. As you can see, these guys are a beautiful tabletop standard and they're really to bring rot and glory for Nurgle on the battlefields of whatever gaming system that you would like to use for these guys. And they look really awesome as well. So now that we're done talking about the cheapskate method and how to paint up your miniatures look like this, let's go ahead and talk about the shopping list that you'll need to buy from Citadel as well as Army Painter to create this same effect, except using those products instead. 
All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the materials you need to purchase from Citadel in order to pay up this method as well. So the first thing you do, of course, is prime your miniatures of Korok Rock Spray, which is going to cost you $17. As for the rest of the list, you need to buy Elysian Green, Militar Green, Vulcan Green, Fulcrum Pink, Caliban Green, Screamer Pink, Luganeth Orange, Cyberite Green. All those are going to cost you $4.55. For the wood portions, you'll need to use Wildwood, which is going to cost you $7.80. You also need to purchase Cadian Fleshstone, More Gas Bone, Baylor Brown, Gauss Blaster Green, Moot Green, Eshin Gray, Flame One Flesh, Baja Roth blue, Ulth 1 gray, and those are all cost you $4.55 for those as well. After that, for your metallic elements, you need to buy Lead Belcher, Screaming Bell, as well as Doom Bull, uh, as well as Screaming Bell. Those are going to cost you $7.80 for those. After that, you need to purchase Doom Bull Brown, as well as Squig Orange. Those are going to cost you $4.55 for those. Retributor Armor for the Gold Element, which is going to cost you $7.80 for that. After that, you need to buy a can of Army Painter Strong Tone, which is going to cost you $32 to pull off that effect, as well as Art Coat by uh, Games Workshop for $7.80. You also need to purchase Nurgle's Rot as well as Blood for the Blood God, which is going to cost you $4.55 a piece for those. And then finally, if you want to do a matte varnish, you'll need to buy a Munitorium Varnish for $19.50, as well as Astro Granite for the texture on the bases for $7.80. So, when you combine everything you need to purchase from Citadel as well as Army Painter to create the same effect that we did, you're talking about a grand total investment of $206 as well as $0.30. And when you subtract that from the Cheapskate method of $43.15, you have the grand total savings of $163.15 being saved. So there you guys have it. This is how you guys can quickly as well as cheaply paint up your miniatures for whatever game you want to use these guys for. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is valuable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all those greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.